Hi everyone, Kate here for a very casual Friday Reads. I have just really been enjoying uh, Louise at Big Hair Bookworms Friday Reads. They're just very conversational and friendly, so I'd like to have a more conversational Friday Reads and tell you about what I've been reading. Uh, I don't know about where you live, but we did get a bit of snow yesterday, which was very swiftly followed by rain, much rain. Um, so we didn't get around to going out in the snow yesterday, but Peter really wanted to go out. So we went out this morning and even though a lot of it was melted and it was pretty wet snow, he still had a lot of fun. So it definitely felt worth it. Um, he is eagerly awaiting the arrival of uh, Lego, little Lego kit he ordered. He had saved up a bunch of money in his piggy bank um, for, I mean, it's just been going for years because he's only four. So how much money does a four-year-old get? But he finally, um, he asked if he could cash out his piggy bank. Uh, so he's very excited. And unfortunately it's been a whole saga. Like it, it, they had trouble delivering it and then it got damaged. So now they're sending the replacement. And I told him it was arriving today. And then I saw the notification and it said 9 p.m. on Friday. So I don't think he's going to see it today. So he's very sad. But we're in from the snow and he's downstairs uh, doing his movie day with warm milk. And I am upstairs filming in his room. So you can see all of his little stuffed animal friends. Um, and I have some tea. This has been a very odd reading month in that I've been very distracted and then feeling it's a good problem to have, but very torn. I have so many books, so many different like kinds of books that I want to read. And so then I end up just not, I end up kind of getting so overwhelmed that I just don't read anything, which is really silly. You know, you should just pick something to read and go with it. But I've also been very distracted, um, planning and getting excited for Cloak and Dagger Christmas, which I announced um, on Wednesday with the other ladies and just really being intentional about having variety in my TBR. Mel had said that that's what she thought would help her not to have burnout. And I realized with Victober, a lot of my books were somewhat similar. And I think think that's maybe why I burned out. And so I want to be extra intentional then with Cloak and Dagger Christmas to um, to have lots of variety in there. And things like Susanna Kearsley still counts as a mystery to me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because also I've picked just some books really branching out with my mysteries and trying not, I realized like my original TBR just had like English cozies, which I love, but I didn't want to do just those because then I would get bored. Uh, and I'm also doing something really fun with the TBR. So I'm looking forward to filming that. I don't know if I'll film it next week because it's going to be crazy with packing and traveling and traveling, you know, to family and back home. Uh, but the next week, I think I will film it. I can't wait to share it with you all. And it was so lovely seeing everyone's comments, being really excited about Cloak and Dagger Christmas, as excited as I am. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. And I'm also really looking forward to seeing Mel's TBR because she has not put hers up yet. And I just, I think she'll pick some really interesting things and she'll just make me want to add more to mine. But I think I'll have to add them to the long-term TBR. So on to the books that I am currently reading. The first is The Path of Daggers by Robert Jordan. This is the eighth in the Wheel of Time series, and it had been over a year since I had picked up one from the series, but Doris is reading it alongside me. Um, it's very low-key buddy read because we've both been kind of distracted this month just with other, you know, other stuff going on, and we have not really kept up nearly at all with the pace we said we were going to, but it's really nice when you're buddy reading and someone else is reading at the same pace you are, whether it's slow or fast, uh, because then you feel like you aren't holding them up or, uh, you know, or you aren't just going way ahead. Um, so yeah, we're just keeping it really low key. My audiobook is about to expire and I'm really bummed because I'm planning on starting uh, knitting uh, stuffed animals for Peter and Arthur for Christmas. And I was really looking forward to listening to that. But alas, I will have to listen to something else because other people have it on hold before I do. So I'll just have to hunker down with a physical copy of it. Then another one is Becoming Mrs. Lewis. 
uh, by Patty Callahan, and I am reading this in honor of Nonfiction November. It's a very compelling audiobook, just a few chapters in. So I definitely want to make some more headway with that and finish that by the end of the month. And then uh, the other one is a buddy read with Kate from the novel Nomad, and we are reading the next in the Lord Peter Whimsy series. And it is Half His Carcass, and already this is a big step up from uh, The Five Red Herrings which was really a come down from Strong Poison. So I think I've recovered from Five Red Hearings and Harriet Vane is back in this one. And there's just so much love of the mystery genre and so much because she's a mystery author, this character, and so much talk of just kind of future mystery plots and plot devices for mysteries. It's just a whole lot of fun. So I'm really pleased to be back in this world. It is taking me a little while to get through it though on my phone. So I'm telling myself, you know, I try to think about reading in terms of um, months, not weeks. So I've had, you know, two kind of mediocre reading weeks. Um, and I'm telling myself that the last two are just going to be great. And I can still think of November as a really productive reading month. Um, and I, you know, just kind of have my priorities and now just get get to reading, get to the books. And so then next on the list in another nonfiction November read is West with the Night by Beryl Markham. This is a really delightful and different book than I usually read. Uh, it's about her time in Kenya and as a pilot and just some really remarkable stories. Uh, just such a different world from mine. So interesting to think about. And the writing is absolutely beautiful. So poetic, so introspective and reflective. And I adore this book already. And I've just finished part one. So 57 pages in, and this is definitely uh, a must, must finish uh, for November, especially because it is a library book, but also because I just want to know what happens to her. Came out in 1942. So I'm enjoying kind of like the older language. Uh, since I'm not reading really any classics this month. The next in my Cinderella Chronicles is All the Ever Afters. Sorry, this is a very shiny cover by Danielle Teller. And this is the untold story of Cinderella's stepmother. So I like it's like wicked, but with but for, you know, Cinderella and um, she's given a name and it's all about her her background and kind of who she was up until the point when um, she knows Cinderella. It's got some really nice little um, borders on pages, little illustrations, and it's in journal forms and then also just, you know, third person narration. So I think it's going to be really, really neat. Um, and the, the author, Danielle Teller, it says she received her medical training at McGill University, Brown University and Yale University. Um, and so I just think it's really interesting that she is, you know, a, someone who has all of this like medical knowledge in her background and then just decided to write a Cinderella retelling. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I don't know much else about it other than that. Another nonfiction November read that has just been delightful. And that is uh, Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. She um, has such a friendly just conversational writing style. And I just love it so much. It just feels so approachable. I only have about a hundred pages of this left. So really, um, not too much. It's just been lovely. I'm reading about a chapter a day and it's a really nice rate to go through that. And lots of interesting things that I'm Googling, you know, pictures of places she talks about or just different terms I didn't know about, all sorts of things. And it's just been a really nice, gentle read. Um, next is my autobiography of Elizabeth Gaskell that I am reading. What a fabulous, fabulous read this is. I'm, oh, I'm so excited. Uh, so I have not made very much progress though, to be honest. I'm only 87 pages in and it's around 600 pages. So I, I, I don't see myself finishing this before the end of the month. I don't know, unless I just have amazing 
reading stamina and energy. But I'm okay with that because I'm savoring it. And I think as booktubers, sometimes we can get a little obsessed with, you know, qu quantity, not quality while we're reading. And so I'm just telling myself not to stress out about when I finish this and just to enjoy it and lap it all up. So, um, you, so far I am just in her very early marriage years. Um, she hasn't written any books yet. But it's just been really interesting to see her background and see some of her inspiration. Um, a lot of her childhood was spent in a town called Nutsford, and that was the inspiration for Cranford. She had a stepmother who she had a somewhat tense relationship with. So you can see Hyacinth Clare from uh, Wives and Daughters and just lots of little elements that she's picking up. And it's neat to see her Unitarian faith is really where she draws a lot of her social justice themes from in her novels. Uh, so yeah, it's all, it, it's interesting to see it. it all comes together in her novels and uh, just learning really neat little things about her and how she always, in her letters, she always wanted such elaborate details from family. She had a brother who would, you know, when he was away at sea, she just wanted to know every last thing about um, his escapades and learning about her, just her love for learning. She just had an insatiable appetite to learn and to know things. Um, yeah, and uh, just lots of really rewarding friendships that she had. I think she was a very good friend to many people. So it's really enjoyable. And I'm really looking forward then to getting into the chapters where she's written things. Um, and, you know, yeah, just seeing, seeing when she has. So uh, we'll continue on with this. I'm not sure when I will finish it. But like I said, I am okay with that. Another one that I've not made much progress in, and that is because it is a lot more heavy of reading than I usually do, and that is Letters to a Diminished Church by Dorothy L. Sayers. I find I have to really take my time with this. I'm even trying a fair amount to read these aloud. And um, it's really profound. It's really wonderful when I do sit down and read it. So I just kind of have to be in the right mindset. Um, and I'm annotating, writing down a fair amount of quotes. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a lovely book. So I'm really resonating with a lot of what she has to say about um, Christianity and how it's not necessarily um, always easy. You know, life isn't easy, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not something worth um, really being committed to. Um, yeah, it's a very thought-provoking and poignant conversational book. Um, the word of the day is conversational. I realize I've said that a fair amount of times. Uh, then lastly, this one I know I can finish by the end of the month, and that is The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis. I have been reading this year through this series with Katie from Life Between Words. It's been such a treat. Um, I'm only two chapters into this, but really have enjoyed everything I've read in this. This one to me, I think feels the most different actually from all the books. Um, this or The Horse and His Boy, but it's, it's nice as you're going through this, the variety that you're seeing. The only thing is unfortunately going, rereading this, it's not living up to my expectations that I had for it. I read it when I was a fair amount younger. Um, and so I think it is one that maybe uh, as a child you do enjoy slightly more. So like I said, I've definitely enjoyed it, but it hasn't quite been a, to the level that I remembered enjoying it the first time. Um, but yeah, definitely a worthwhile endeavor to reread this series this year. And I really don't remember much of The Last Battle. So I'm looking forward to that. And we're going to definitely fit that in in December. So then we can just have that finished. Um, yeah. So those are my reads. Uh, it's, a, you know, I'm calling it a Friday reads, but it's really kind of finishing, hope, hoping to finish by the end of November. Uh, yeah. So let me know what you're reading. And I do have a couple of very late, uh, my Victober five-star TBR two videos, the reactions and the predictions um, coming. I just have to edit them. So they're on my computer. Just need to 
get my act together and edit them. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. We don't really have anything planned, which I am okay with. <laughs> Cause like I said, Thanksgiving is going to be crazy. Um, yeah. So I hope you uh, have a good rest of your day and happy reading this weekend.